I've gone ahead and thrown it into the rain barrel to rinse a little bit more and to get some of the vinegar smell out of it. As you can see, it's not as thick, it's not as rubbery, and now it's time to go ahead and string it up onto the frame and let it dry. Here's our hide and my hide frame. With this frame, all that it is is two by fours, but so that I can reuse it with different size hides, I've drilled several holes into it so that I can adjust it to the side of the hide and put carriage bolts in there, a little washer, and I tighten it down with a nut. With our hide, go ahead and lay it uh, hair side down and you'll want a little paring knife of some kind or a small knife to cut your holes with. Some people use regular uh, sisal or hemp twine to tie these up. I prefer using small lengths of nylon cord because they can be reused. I start out by tying all four legs in the corners and once we have that done I'll show you how I whip stitch the rest of it up onto the frame. You can see that I tied up my four corners and I've gone ahead and whip stitched two sides of it. You want to get it fairly flat and fairly tight. I'm going to go ahead and redo that corner to make sure that it's stretched out well. But you don't need to pull it so tight that it will tear out your holes that you cut in the side also. So with this, take your paring knife and just punch a small hole in the side. Go under your frame. And through the hole. And repeat it all the way down. of the hide, lean it up against something to dry, make sure that you have the flesh side facing away from the sun so that you don't get a grease burn, and then go ahead and let it dry. So I'm going to go ahead and sew up this other side, and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. When you run out of string, just go ahead and tie another one on. It's fairly dark now, and I don't know if you can see this, but there's one thing I want to mention. I have it all strung up now, laid it against my garage to dry tomorrow when the sun comes out, and frankly, as dry as it is out here, it'll probably dry a little bit tonight. You can see, it's not tight as a drum yet. And that's because it hasn't dried out. This technically is rawhide. As this dries, it'll shrink. And tomorrow, it should be super tight along this. You don't have it too tight that it'll tear out the holes, but it should tighten up real good. Also, I mentioned, I put it with the hair side towards the sun. come out and we'll start taking the rest of the epidermis off and the membrane on the flesh side off. Our hide is dried out. And if you can eat, this is the flesh side. And now we're going to make sure that we get all of the membrane off of here and then all the epidermis from the hair side. You can hear this over the wind. You can see that it's dried up just like a drum, and this is what is used for drum heads. 
This is my traditional scraper. If you can, scrape all the rest of this membrane off with this. If you don't get the membrane off in the epidermis with brain tanning, it won't penetrate, the brains won't penetrate the hide itself. So you have to get all the rest of this off. As I said, you can go ahead and scrape it this way. And frankly, I think that fleshing on a frame like this is more efficient than throwing it over a beam like we did before. But a quicker way to do this is with modern technology. Yes, the cavemen didn't have this, but if they had, they would have used it. This is a regular belt sander. And the nice thing about it is that you can really visually see how much of that membrane you take off. Here's how it works. You don't want to lay in too much, just delicately move at it. And as you can see, that makes sure that the top layer of that membrane is totally off of there. A little bit more traditional way of doing this is again with your scraper. You can just use regular sandpaper and that's what I used to do. Or you can uh, use some kind of a piece of sandstone or rock like that. Believe me though, for saving your back and saving yourself a lot of work, particularly in hot weather, it's hard to beat a belt sander. You'll want to get you'll want to get all the way out to the edges and do the entire face of the hide. Then we'll flip it over and get the epidermis the same way. You should be able to see visually how much wider this is, it's much fluffier, and when we brain it, it'll absorb the brains much better. Now we're going to flip it over and do the epidermis. Here's the hair side, and most of the epidermis is still on the top of this. To make sure that we get it off, it's going to be the same as the other side. You'll get that visual white instead of this yellow and then you'll know that you've gotten through it. We're going to go ahead and go about it the same way. You can see that this is whitened up considerably. Gotten the epidermis off. Let's untie it and take a look at it. been fleshed, been de-aired, and it's been sanded. The next step, which will be in another video, is the actual braining part of brain tan. You can see the size of this. Looks pretty large now, and it's a pretty good hide. Good size, not too much damage. This will shrink up a little bit, and it'll be a little bit smaller once we're actually finished braining it, because it'll thicken with the brains. So, flashing, dehairing, and sanding it. Next time we'll brain it. Enjoy.